Hey, uh, I've got a good video today here on why not to live in the Philippines. Um, it's not really a negative thing, but simply going over some of the things that can become very annoying. Um, and when you're here on holiday, it can be quite comical, but over time, uh, it can be a bit of a pain in the arm. Uh, pain in the arm. Um, the first thing I would want to say is things like roosters, they're everywhere, and what you find is the, the drunk going home at 3 a.m. will set off one of them, and then it heads all the way out, right around the community, um, for every uh, rooster within hearing distance of another rooster, and it just goes round and round for 45 minutes maybe. Ideal for waking up early in the morning if you wanted to, not if you don't want to. Um, that's only a small one though. Um, video key is another one. Um, Filipinos generally have sound, sound level 11, uh, which is the absolute maximum that a stereo will go. Um, you'll, you'll come across fiestas, parties, birthdays, anything. Any reason to get a video key going, and the volume will be as loud as it possibly can. The same goes for stereo very often, um, where they'll actually put the speakers outside just so that the whole area can hear the beautiful boom beat at six in the morning. Uh, things like that I find really irritating because I, I struggle to read. Um, because I, I, I do enjoy reading and I do like a bit of quiet time, but it's very difficult to get time where everything's completely quiet. Um, electricity is a big one for me as well. Uh, when I first moved here, my electric bill was less than a thousand pesos. Uh, most recently, it's been twenty-nine thousand. Uh, okay, we've got more air conditioning and a few other bits and pieces, but it's actually more expensive than my parents like to in the UK. Um, okay, we have air con, they, they have uh, gas central heating, but if I, if you, you're looking at over 500 pounds a month in electric bills, I don't know how you can justify that with anybody. Um, next thing is dogs, as you can hear. Um, the fact that most people don't really care for their dogs um, I've got a house on my left here with at least five, and a house over here with at least six. Um, they bark like mad, um, all times of day, if somebody's walking past. Those dogs you actually heard weren't actually the house next door, they're, they're dogs further around. Um, because you find dogs here are just left to roam um, wherever they want to go, and out in the street, you come around about 2 a.m., 1 a.m., there could be like 20, 30 dogs in the neighborhood because nobody controls them. Um, which isn't, isn't good from a safety aspect if they actually have a pack mentality. Most of these dogs are pretty useless. Um, they're not really bothered by people. At the same time, the country does have rabies. Um, next is littering. Uh, littering is a big thing because nobody actually cares. They, even if there's a dustbin there, they won't use it. Uh, prime example of that is the, they have plastic uh, bags where they make it into a tube um, that they sell, that people sell water in it. What they'll do is they'll bite it, drink the water, and just throw it on the street. Um, I've seen this at funerals and also there's just thousands of plastic bags for no apparent reason. Um, I don't know how you deal with it, but for me, I just find it disgraceful. Um, the same with fly tipping. Um, a prime example of that is a lot I want to buy next door. Um, what you have there is the community over the other side here finds it. Uh, reach for the camera, probably not. Uh, it's right out there anyway. But basically, what happens is. They get all their garbage, um, dirty diapers and God knows what, 
and they throw it over a fence into an empty lot here. Uh, a lot, what we, we call it a plot in the UK, uh, plot of land. And it just builds up with all these dirty nappies and plastic, all stuff that cannot be disposed of easily. Um, every now and again it gets set fire to. Um, obviously, having all those lovely toxins in the air is great for the community, um, which we'll get on to. The, uh, the burning in a minute, but the fact is they do not give a shit about other people's um, private property. Um, they see it as the owner's not here, so it doesn't matter. Um, stuff like that really annoys me because it just shows a complete disrespect for others, especially when the, most of these people are actually from within their own communities. Um, it's just uh, disrespectful. It's the only way I can say it. But also, it makes the area look so crap. It, it shows a complete disrespect for the area you're living in. It's like crapping on your own doorstep. But mentality is ingrained, and the river looks just as good. It's just as full of plastic as it is here. Um, another primary prime reason for flooding. Uh, when you see it. Uh, on the news where people have had these huge floods, a lot of it is because they need to wash the plastic away before the water will start flowing again, uh, which causes flooding. Um, the next thing would be internet. Internet is crap here. I mean, really, really bad. Um, you have to monitor it to make sure they're giving you the bandwidth that you requested. Oh, sorry. What you're paying for, not requested. Um, for for example, they will restrict it if they know you're not not um, monitoring it. You will find at peak hours it can sometimes drop down a little bit without you knowing. If you you can you can get software that actually monitors all this stuff. But for my two lines here, I'm paying my two main lines. I did have I've got four internet, but two. One of them, um, somebody else like, is using it, and the third one I just disconnected and told them to go to hell um, because for four months it never worked, and then they tried to film me for the four months, adding it, taking from the bill, adding it, trying to get more and more money out of me, and as it went along to the point where I just said, you know, just forget it, I'm not interested. Um, but the internet is costing me about. Uh, let me see. It's it's just under £100 a month for two 5 meg lines, which they're okay when they're okay, and um, they are not as stable as they should be. And when we have power cuts, we lose internet. When we have um, upgrades, because everything's always being upgraded, even if it's not, you know. It's, if, if you phone up, they'll say, oh, we're currently upgrading your area. That's why your internet's not working. What they mean is something's broken in the exchange. Um, but that's pretty normal. Um, poor service is the standard. Uh, so, yeah, internet's expensive, but also unreliable. And also, it varies area to area. Because Globe is terrible in this area, but PLDT is okay, and the engineers are pretty good. Um, it's just expensive compared to other countries. Um, next, I would say the price of vehicles is way overpriced. Um, it's excessive. Uh, you know, they, they will, there is this thing where they say, oh yeah, but it's just reduced imports and blah, blah, blah. If that's the case, why is it every politician driving around in a new vehicle and they've normally got several um, customs officials are notorious for having new vehicles, I wonder why. Um, but things are overinflated for no real obvious reason except for exploitation. Um, food's more expensive than it should be. Clothing and goods that um, 
should be much cheaper. You know, I'm, I'm talking like these sunglasses, for example, they're, they're quite expensive here. Um, okay, you can get the cheap Chinese knockoffs, but, but the, like these, these are the originals. Um, but these are more expensive than they are in the UK. Um, they were cheaper in the Middle East, and pretty much everything is like that. I would struggle to find um, somewhere on the planet that's more expensive for many of the things that we, we buy in the Philippines. Uh, camera equipment is excessively expensive. Computer equipment is excessively expensive. Um, but on top of that, there's so much substandard stuff here. Um, Chinese crap is all over the place. There's, everyone knows which malls they are, they're, they're everywhere, but they sell the worst stuff I've seen on the planet. Um, if, if it's not surplus, it's um, down in stock. I can't see them selling anything that's actually new, except maybe in the food, food courts. And even in the food courts, I've actually seen um, previously um, the filing off of the uh, expiry dates. <laughs> because the fruit, they, they bought surplus food, which is bankrupt stock or going out of date stock. It, it's basically stuff companies are dumping, um, and then they sell it here at more than it costs where it comes from. Uh, when I say where, more than it costs, I'm talking about more than retail value of a good product. Um, because a lot of stuff here is substandard to a level which is just useless. Uh, you'll find like laminate here that is so thin on furniture that within a couple of weeks it's already starting to bubble and uh, fall apart. A, because it's too thin, but B, the glue is uh, not adhered properly. And it's just crap. Because a lot of it was initially for um, giving for export somewhere else. It, it, it failed. It failed the quality test, so it ends up here at a more expensive price than the good product does somewhere else in the world. Bizarre, but it's true. Um, these sort of things I'm just tired of, to be honest. Um, it, it's just not not the way our society society should function. Um, getting back to the burning of plastic, that's another one. The we do actually have waste management here now. We didn't a couple of years ago, um, but people were still dumb. Um, it's just part of life where people will throw crap in someone else's garden. Um, and it happens all the time. Then in the evenings, you get that burning smell of plastics being burned all over the place. Because uh, a lot of fires are done to scare off mosquitoes, but if they didn't have so much crap everywhere, there would be a lot less mosquitoes. Uh, but generally, generally life here, if you're looking for something simple where you're not asking much and don't expect much, then that's, the Philippines is ideal for that. Um, you can stay off the tax radar if you're working abroad, for example, because uh, you can just come in and out and and work here when it's convenient. Uh, sorry, work abroad when it's convenient. Um, corruption here, as long as you're not too involved with things, you don't really see anything. Um, because it's focused on abusing people with money um, and the very poor, uh, like charities and things like that. It's not really focused on the individual. Uh, and I won't go into charities and politics because simply it's not my country to fix. And if you're, you're either aware of the problems or, or um, don't know about them. But either way, I'm not about to fix them and I have no interest in making impossible changes. Um, sorry, trying to make impossible changes in a country that isn't mine. Uh, but I can't really say anything is like stands out like a sore thumb to say that well, I've had enough, I'm leaving. Uh, inactivity by the organizations and government bodies during the earthquakes and the uh, 
uh, Typhoon, Haiyan would be pretty close. Um, the alleged uh, theft of funds and stock and stock swapping with cheap goods uh, and stealing the expensive goods, hoarding goods and general exploitation, not only by people here, but organizations that turned up for the day to slap a child, make them cry, and get that uh, telephone number on the TV before disappearing, um, are all part and parcel of world corruption. Um, that's why I'm, I'm not really taking much interest in it, um, because it's not something I can change. It's just as corrupt in the UK as it is here, uh, because simple things like collecting money for uh, relief can create problems because you're not an organization even though you're actually just helping people, you're not actually claiming to be anything um, it's just a, a whole system built on corruption like I said, it's not just here, it's, it's global um, it's not hard to look into World Bank or uh, UNICEF or any of the other big organizations to see that their administration embezzles most of the money um, and I've got no time or interest to try and change that simply because most people are willing to say hey I gave my one pound or whatever I've done my bit and walk away from it so I'm not going to stick my life um, in trying to change that culture I just don't take part in it uh, but yeah, like I said, most of the things don't really bother me. Um, silent irritants are always the, the, the ones which I bother me by say silent irritants. It's mainly the noise. I can pretty much do without uh, most things except quiet. I like quiet. And as you can hear here, here today, it's pretty quiet. Except for the rooster the odd airsoft gun going off in the background and nothing else um, but yeah I mean I can't really say this, this is a reason to say I, um, I would definitely not live here there, there is plenty of reasons I'd say well I would consider other locations um, But, yeah, there's nothing that stands up. It's not cheap to live here, um, not, not to have a reasonable standard of living. You, I know some people say, oh, well, I've got a reasonable standard of living, but my lifestyle here, compared to the UK, uh, price-wise, it's more expensive here. But also, along with that, it's easier for me to work in the UK, so it's actually more beneficial for me to be in the UK. Um, because the cost of living doesn't make any difference um, being nearer to the work is actually better so I can't from my, my perspective it's not it's not great but at the same time um, I would say there's certain things that niggle at me in the UK which aren't here in the Philippines like the uh, if your car is off the road for example say I'm here and I put my car in the garage I still have to uh, put a declaration that it's not on the road. Why? I mean, it's, it's obviously uh, either on the road or it's off the road. It's not. If I'm not even in the country where they expect it to be. But those sort of thing, those sort of processes are what irritates me about the UK a lot because there's been so many extra bits of paperwork added to everything. Where here, okay. You have to do this to get a bank account, do this to do um, your visa, do this to do uh, your driving license, but you can do them all very quickly. And it's not a case of send off a form and we'll write back to you in two weeks and say you missed something on the form or uh, they do your tax return form or something. Generally here, it's all face-to-face, -face, which is something that can be a bit tedious and long-winded, 
but at the same time, once it's done, it's done. Um, the UK can sometimes be a bit of a nightmare if, like, the self-assessment tax forms. Um, that is one of the most bizarre things I've ever seen in the UK. I mean, the tax man actually asks you what tax you pay, what you owe, and what you think you owe. Why? They're supposed to already know. Um, but that's, that's the UK, like I said, Philippines don't really have, to have any of those issues. Mainly, most of the issues in the Philippines are all small issues. Um, poverty is obviously a big one, but that poverty then subdivides into beggars on the street, uh, scavengers wandering around looking for metal and God knows what. But that can also be seen as a positive thing because they actually do recycling. Um, you know, for, for me, I'm quite happy to leave all my tin cans and plastic bottles outside for them to come and pick them up. Much rather that than they go to landfill or burn burn on the empty lot. So uh, that's all I can really say about the negative side. There's nothing really is, uh, stands out for me. I know there is for other people. Um, like the sex trade, for example. But I'm not involved with the sex trade. I don't live anywhere near it. Um, um, what I've found from the very little I've seen of it is just dirty old men coming here for uh, finding young women, blah, blah, blah. That is something that is not for me to decide. And the fact is there's a lot of corruption involved in that because prostitution is actually illegal in the Philippines. So. How, how come it's a booming industry? Um, so, yeah. The only other last thing I would finish on is education. Um, I'm not ha happy with the education standard here, which is one of the reasons I'm looking to take my kids to the UK to get educated. Because I can't see the opportunities here um, that would be useful for the children. There's no way I would let my kids work at the mall here for um, 20, 20, what's that, about 20 quid a week or something. No way. Um, then what's the other possibility? Oh, go and work in a call center. Well, the thing, the, the call, see, the thing is, like a call center in the West, it's often a stepping stone. People take those jobs on while they're doing their degree or something else. Because this was a... Um, this was a thing where I could understand where there's a problem with the immigration in the UK because when people started filling in all those jobs at McDonald's and everything else, those were the jobs um, that were often taken by students um, that helped them with their living expenses while work, working and living away from home while they're studying. So when you remove that, it helped remove some opportunities for education for some people. Because um, I was a working student. But where am I going with this? Well, the, the fact is, you do the call center, and what are you going to do with it? The reason I've offered you is, you're going to be an office, a call center manager? Um, it's just, it's so limited here. That's why the best and the brightest have left. Um, there are over 10 million people working overseas. Doctors that become nurses just to work abroad. <laughs> There's no way I'm putting my kids through that. Um, come hell or high order, will be the kids will be getting their British passports and living in a country that actually recognizes the abilities and achievements of people. And um, I think the Philippines often neglects its people uh, for profit part of third world politics, and I was trying to keep away from it. But yeah, I do believe that often things are exploited beyond what they should be. There should be more opportunities for people. And there could be. There's no reason for it not to be. The BPO industry is worth billions. Um, and where's all the money going? I mean, people talk about all these jobs being created, but where's the company owners? Where's the cash going? Why isn't it being reinvested in education? Why aren't we seeing more um, technology-based ideas coming forward? Um, that's my little five-minute 
about 24 minute rap. Um, but yeah, those are the things that would bug me about living in the Philippines and have done. Um, but beyond that, there's nothing really to grumble about. Because you know? sometimes people try to make out um, things are worse than they are. They're not, they're not that bad here. It's just that there's other opportunities. <laughs> You know, for, for me personally, there's other opportunities out there. I'm not 65 um, living on my own in the West and coming here and finding to have a community to live with and people that actually want to talk and engage with me where before I had nobody to talk to. Um, I actually have a life here and in the UK. So it doesn't really... It's a different set of rules for me, I suppose. And I'm not... Although I like traveling and interested in that, I'm at a stage where my career is getting to the stage where I need to go back to college and study for another three years. So I couldn't actually say the Philippines is terrible, because it's not. Um, there is shocking things that happen here, and I could talk about those in another video, because 26 minutes is a pretty long video. Um, but for most people, I don't think you're going to have anything major to grumble about. It's just going to be a lot, and I mean a lot, of small things like air pollution, uh, pickpockets, video key, dogs barking, neighbors shouting. The normal social disorder stuff that um, you can find in a UK council estate. <laughs> Um, okay, well, that's, that's me. I'm going to cut this one off. Uh, thanks for listening.